In this week's screencast, we'll be reducing an API to our courtside application. We're going to be using the Django REST framework. Um, this is probably going to be spanning a few screencasts. So what I'm going to introduce today is just how to set up Django REST framework and to get a simple API for a particular model in our system. I'm going to be particularly doing the game model this week, and then we'll we'll see what we can do with that in the future. This API will mostly be built to deal with um, API requests from other users or potentially support a mobile application for courtside. So let's get started. So we're just going to install, install Django REST framework. We're going to install Markdown and Django dash filter that allows to filter on certain things. While that's installing, I'll show you how this works. So Django REST framework is a simple way for, for providing APIs. It's a third-party application. We'll end up having something like this. Um, it has a bunch of requirements. These are the main three that we're going to be using today. Some simple steps on how to add the application to your pre-existing Django application. There's extensive documentation, which is very good. I'm going to show you just how to take a particular model and provide an API for your users to interact with your data sets. So this is done. We're going to quickly launch up our courtside application here. So we're going to go to our games models and we'll see that our game has a few, a few attributes here. It has a few number of players, it has an owner, it has a sport that you're actually playing, the time it starts. We have a little bit of location of where the actual game is. We have an address, a human readable address and some restrictions in players. Now our API is mostly going to consist of um, the time of the game, the address of the game, and the number of players. So we're going to have to write some type of serializer that takes it from this model that we have in our database to something that will translate to uh, API that other people can read. So we're going to have to create a bit of a serializer. So we're going to create a new file here. We're going to call it serializer. This is where all our serializers will go, but we're only concerned with installing the game serializer at the moment. So we're going to import game. We're going to import the model here. And we're going to create a serializer for this model. So we're going to import from the REST framework. REST framework. We're going to import serial serializers and we're going to create a new class call it game serializer and from serializers dot model serializer is something that Django rest framework provides that we can simply create a serializer that passes down the information that we need so our model will be game and our fields that we want to provide back out to the user are so we're gonna have to go back so maybe we split this into two pane layout two columns probably better for this type of thing here so we want to have players So we'll just have the ID of the game. We're going to have the owner. We're going to have the sport. And we're going to have the start. It's probably quicker if I do it like this. whether or not the game is active. So that'll serve as our serializer for the game. Once we have that, we're then able to write the rest of our API portions in the next step. Now that we've implemented our serializers, we have a way of taking our models to some serialized object that the API view that 
Django REST framework provides can render. So next step is to simply write our views out that will be serving up our games. Um, we will have a game view for many of games and we'll also have a detailed view for a singular game. So what we're going to do here is just going to implement out our API views. So we're going to import our models. So from, from model import game, we're also going to import our serializer. So from serializers import game serializer. Time in Python notebook is messing up my messing up my keystrokes. Um, we're also going to import uh, Django.http import HTTP 404 when our APIs end up not rendering to anything else. Um, we're going to import the REST framework views, API view, and this will be the view that ends up rendering our API results, and we're going to now start implementing our classes. So we're going to have a game list view. So game list will be an API view which has all of the games that are active listed. So all we're going to do simply is go games is equal to games dot objects dot all is active that are currently active. It's true. Let's just double check that against our model. We're going to do that. We are then going to go serialized games. So we'll equal to game serializer and we're going to pass it the games and we're going to tell it that we're rendering many of them. So, so it knows that there are multiple ones that are going to be passed or it knows that a query set is going to be passed down. And then we're going to simply return a response, which is another thing from the rest framework dot response. Import response. So and then we'll simply pass our serialized games that data to that view and it should render our list of games that are active. Um, the next one we're gonna implement is game detail, which is another API view. So let's say a particular user wants to drill down some more information on a particular uh, game or just to get one game back. What we have to do is implement a get object function. So it's going to be def get object self. We're going to use its PK as its identifier. We're going to go, we're going to try to get the one that they asked for. So we're going to go try. Turn game dot object dot get pk is equal to pk. And we'll handle this exception where the game does not exist, and we'll raise our HTTP four error if it doesn't exist. And then we then also have to handle the get scenario. So that's the actual page view that when it hits what actually happens. So that's going to take in a request. It's going to take in a PK value and our format will be none. Particular case. Um, we will then pass down our game. We're going to call our get object function. So we're going to go self dot get object. We're going to pass the PK value here. We are then going to run the serializer against it. So serialized game is equal to game serializer with the game passed in. And then again, we're going to return our response as we did before. We're going to go serialized game dot data. And that's all that is required to 
build your API for the most part. That's all the logic that's involved. If yours are fairly simple, sometimes they do tend to get confusing when there's various permissions, but we'll cover that in another Wix screencast. But for the most part, this is all you need. So the next step is we're going to be hooking up our endpoints and making sure that everything's actually working. Um, I made a writing error here. This needs to be inside a function called get, which is defined here. So we have self request format none. Format is basically has to deal with whether it renders JSON or HTML. So when you want to simply return all of your objects in one call that apply to a fil particular filter, you apply the filter, you serialize the objects, you tell the serializer that you're passing a query set, and then you return your response. The API view will return anything that is implemented in the get response. So conversely, you can see here that in the get object, one, it filters out and checks to see if it gets one particular thing and then does the same exact thing. All it does is it gets the game, serializes the game, returns the game. And you don't need to specify multiple ones because you're only specifying, you're only passing in one particular game. I also require to change the all to a filter because you can't specify uh, decrementing objects here on all. You have to use a filter. So I switched that out too. So next portion is to update our settings so we add the rest framework to our options and next we just need to render uh, the pages for our url so those are very straightforward all you first do is import format suffix patterns all that does and allows us to do is to provide a format in which the render response will return um, this is mostly used for development um, you can specify what format you expect in the call when you're making it from a client but here is just for development purposes. Uh, we'll go into that in a second. Um, and then we import our API file, which contains the two functions that we defined, and we create views for them. So to give me the list of all active games, I'm going to simply just call the API endpoint API games, and that'll render the game list view. And our detail view will have to have will have to provide a particular um, primary key, which is the ID of the game, and it'll give us a uh, a singular game result back um, it could have more or less details in our case it's just the same it's just one way to ask for a particular game as opposed to all of them um, and then at the end we simply pass our URL patterns to our format suffix format suffix patterns and assign that to URL patterns again which really all it does is makes it so that we can we can at the end of an API endpoint we can provide .json or .html and it'll render one or the other so just to show you that everything actually does work, we're gonna start our server, we're gonna make run server, and we're gonna go to our browser. And as you can see, I had this up a second ago. We're gonna go API games. And as you can see, it lists us the two active games that are happening. The owner is one, and the sport number is two. You can go on to expand on these particular ways, the way the serializer works. Our particular serializer just takes the PK value and shows it. You can write your own serializers, which is the real power here for the Django REST framework to allow you to render them in many different ways. But here are the two active games. I can easily show you that in the admin. Game, game. So as you can see, there were that one. This is the first one that was created. And as you can see, it's a baseball game. That, that long to latitude, number of players, no softball players. So... And if you want to get a particular particular uh, game, all you have to do is pass in the ID, which is our PK value. So let's say we want to get the first one, we'd go slash six, and that would provide us only a list of the one. And we're allowed to see their name, owner, and sport, which is the same as what we did in the list view, but it is more detailed. Now, if we were to simply go dot JSON, I believe it's like this. Nope. Or query string format equal JSON. 
it would provide us a JSON value that is provided. So this is actually JSON data that's being returned as opposed to the HTML format, which is the default that we were seeing before. So if you wanted in the future, wanted to add another field to this particular thing, all you'd have to do is simply update your serializer. So for example, let's say we wanted to add our restrictions to the API. All we would do is provide a new placeholder for that in the serializer. Um, and hopefully that won't require us to restart our server. And you can see that we are passing our, our restrictions down and they are now live in the API. Um, Django for REST framework is quite an, an awesome project. Um, next time we'll go into something with to do with how to lock down permissions and maybe even do some create and delete requests with Django REST framework. Currently all we did was set up a serializer, set up some endpoints and be able to get some data for our read only application. And there was no authentication applied. So anybody who hits the endpoint can see whatever they want. Maybe we can provide some authentication on games that only you created will be returned or games that you've been part of in the past. This concludes our screencast on Django REST framework. I'll see you guys next week.